In this video, I'll show you how to get started with Azure Blob Storage. And I'm going to make it different from most of the videos on this topic by showing you how to run Azure Storage locally on your machine. I'm going to run a service called Azureite and it's a lightweight server clone for Azure Storage. You will see that it's pretty much identical to the Azure Storage API and we will be able to use the Azure SDK to connect to our Azureite instance and how we are going to run Azureite on our machine is using Docker. There is an official Microsoft image for this service and we are going to start this service locally to run Azure Blob Storage inside of a container. I'm going to start by updating my docker compose yaml file to add a new docker container. This is going to be a container that's going to run my blob storage instance and here is the definition for my new service. I'm going to call it run tracker blob storage and I'm going to spin up an azureite image so that I can connect to this service locally. I'm also going to configure a volume where I'm going to map the data for my blob storage instance. It's going to be exposed on the port of 10,000 and I'm adding some additional commands to only start the blob service when azureite starts. I'm also exposing it on localhost so that I can connect to it and this configures where Azureite is going to store its data internally inside of the container and I'm mapping this volume onto my system so that I can persist this data between multiple starts of the container. So let me start my application by calling Docker Compose and I'm going to open up my Docker desktop so that you can see the Azureite service slowly starting up and you can see that Azureite is running on the port 10,000. If I hop into the logs you can see that the blob service is now listening on the port 10,000, which is what we configured inside of our Docker Compose YAML file. And at this point, I can navigate to the Azure Storage Explorer and I can use it to connect to my Azureite instance. So you can see that I have access to blob containers. Blob is actually short for binary large object. And this is the main purpose of the Azure Blob Storage service. It's mainly used to store files for your application, like profile images, any images that you might need for the user interface, documents like PDF reports and invoices, and so on. So let's connect to the blob container service, and let's start by creating a container. I'm going to call it images, and what a container is in context of the Azure Blob Storage service, it's basically like a folder on your file system. So the container is just there to hold any blobs inside, and for example, we can upload a file. So let me go and add a file and I'm going to attach an image of a clean architecture diagram. So let's go ahead and upload this. You can see the commands being executed below and here is my blob inside of the images container. If I hit preview, I can get a preview window and see what the file looks like. And if I copy the URL for this file and send this request from Postman, we're going to get a 403 response because the blobs are not publicly available by default. If I want to change this, I can go ahead and update my container to set the public access level. And let's say that we want to allow public access for blobs. I'm going to click apply and then let's go back to Postman. And now if I send the same request, you will see that we get back the image that I just uploaded into my blob storage service. I'm going to create another container that I'm going to call files and we're going to use this container and I'm going to use this container to implement file upload and download from my ASP.NET Core application. Because we're working in the clean architecture, let's start by creating an abstraction for our blob service. So I'm going to create a storage folder and inside of it, I'm going to add a new interface that I will call the iBlob service. And this is going to be my abstraction is going to allow me to interact with the Azure Blob Storage Service. I'm going to define a few methods on this interface. First, I'm going to have an upload async method. It's going to accept a stream representing my file content. The second argument is going to be a content type. And I'm also going to specify an optional cancellation token. The reason I'm returning a GUID here is because I'm going to randomly generate the names for my blobs inside of the container. And this is how we are going to reference them when we want to download the specific blob. I'm going to add a simple record that's going to represent my file response when I want to actually download a blob. And let's return this from the download async method. This is going to have just one argument, which is going to be the file ID. 
and this is going to be the same value returned by the upload method. And lastly, I'm going to add another method called delete async. This is going to allow me to specify a file ID and delete a file from Azure Blob Storage. Let's move the file response into its own file. And then let's implement the Blob service to actually connect to our Azure Blob Storage. I'm going to add this implementation in the infrastructure project and let me add the same folder structure. So I'm going to add a storage folder and then I'm going to add the blob service class. This class is going to be internal to the infrastructure project, but it's going to implement my iBlob service interface. First things first, we need to add the respective SDK that's going to allow us to connect to Azure Blob Storage. So if you just look for blob, Azure Storage Blobs is going to show up and I'm going to install the latest version so that we can use it to upload and download our blobs. So let's go back to our blob service and how you interact with Azure Blob Storage is through a blob service client. So I'm going to inject this as a dependency and we're going to configure it later with dependency injection. For now, let's see how we're going to implement our blob service methods. If you recall, I added a container inside of our Azure Blob Storage instance and I called it files. So I'm going to add a constant here that is going to represent my container name. And in a production environment, you will probably get this value from a configuration setting. But in this example, I'm going to hard code this value to make our implementation simpler. So let's start with the upload async method. We're going to use our blob service client to get an instance of a blob container client. Let's give this the name of container client. And as I said, we're going to use the blob service client to call the get blob container client method. And we just need to pass in the container name. Once we have the container client, this is like our interface into the container on Azure Blob Storage. And we can think of this as a folder containing our files. You're going to use the container client to get a blob client instance, which is going to allow you to interact with a specific blob or just one file in Azure Blob Storage. So we're going to say container client, get blob client, and we need to provide a name for our blob. So I said that we would use a random GUID to represent this value. So let's add this into a variable so that I can return it later. And I'm going to call it the file ID. I also have to call to string here because blob names have to be strings. Now, if you want to, you can also extract the file extension and add it as part of the blob name. I'm not going to be doing that. What I am going to do now is use the blob client to call the upload async method. And we are going to pass in our stream representing our file. Then I'm going to create a new blob HTTP header instance so that I can set the content type value, which is my second argument. And I can also pass in the cancellation token. Once the upload completes, we're going to return the file ID so that we can reference it later when we want to download or delete this blob. So let me quickly implement the delete method. We're going to use the same steps as before. So we want to get a container client. Then we're going to use the container client to get a blob client instance. And then you can say blob client delete async. Alternatively, you can also call the delete if exists async method. And either way, we can pass in a cancellation token value. And then for the download async method, let me copy the same steps. So we're going to get a container client instance and then a blob client instance. And then we're going to use the blob client to download our blob. So you can call the download async method or the download content async method if your content can fit in memory. I'm also going to pass in the cancellation token. Of course, I'll have to await this because it's an asynchronous method and this returns a blob download result. So I can go ahead and use this to return a new file response instance and we're going to use the response to access the response value. Note that this can be null. I'm just going to focus on the happy path and I'm going to convert the content into a stream and I'm also going to pass in our content types. So I'm going to get this from the response value and then you can access the details and the content type. And this wraps up the blob service implementation. Now I need to configure it with dependency injection. We're going to configure it as a singleton. So let me add a singleton service. 
of i blob service and then blob service is going to be my implementation i also need to add the blob service client as a singleton so let me add that and we're just going to say return a new blob service client as a singleton service and we need to pass it the connection string value so i'm going to use my i configuration object to get a connection string and let's call it the blob storage connection string now we have to add this connection string value in our application settings so i'm going to open up the web api project and inside of my application settings i'm going to add the blob storage connection string i'm using the simplified connection string value because I'm connecting to my local Azureite instance and I can set use development storage to true. Because I'm running this inside of a Docker network, I'm also going to set the development storage proxy URI to point to my blob storage container. This is going to match the name of my service in the Docker Compose YAML file. If you want to try this locally, this particular setting inside of the connection string is going to be very important. So now that we have configured our connection string and dependency injection, let's go ahead and actually use our blob service to upload and download files in our API. I'm going to add a new endpoint class and let's just call it files. I'm going to implement my i endpoint abstraction, which is a simplified way for me to map my minimal API endpoints and I'm going to expose a files endpoint. This endpoint is going to be asynchronous and it's going to accept an iform file, which is available for minimal APIs, I believe starting from .NET 7. I'm going to confirm that and add it in the description of this video. I'm also going to inject my blob service abstraction so that I can actually upload this file. The implementation of our endpoint is going to be very simple. I'm just going to use the form file to open a read stream. Then I'm going to use my blob service to upload this file. So we're going to pass in the stream. I'm going to use the file to access the content type. And let's leave the cancellation token as a default value. We're going to get back a file ID. And I'm going to return this file ID from my minimal API endpoint. So I'm going to say return results.ok and give me back the file id i'm also going to tag my endpoint to have a files tag and a really important step if you are running in dotnet 8 is turning off anti-forgery in dotnet 8 they added a breaking change that minimal api endpoints that accept an iform file or a form collection need to support anti-forgery. So you can either specify an anti-forgery token or you can disable anti-forgery to simplify your implementation. I'm also going to expose a get endpoint, which is going to have a route of files and then a file ID. And this is going to be our actual GUID value that we get back from the post endpoint. So let's accept this argument. I'm also going to need the blob service. And inside of our endpoint, we're just going to accept a file response instance that we get by calling our blob service download async method. We're going to pass it the file ID value and let's return results.file. So I'm going to return the file directly and let me pass in the stream and the content type from my file response object. And I'm going to copy this endpoint one more time to make it simpler for me to define my delete endpoint. And inside of the body of this endpoint, we're just going to call the delete async method, pass it the file ID, and then I'm going to return results, no content. So now we have three endpoints matching the three methods that we have on our blob service. Let's go ahead and test them out. If I open up my Swagger user interface, here are the three endpoints in my files group. And let's start with the post endpoint. I'm going to attach an image and I'm going to use the same clean architecture image from our prior example. If I send this request, we're going to get back a GUID value representing our blob ID. And if I go to the get endpoint and pass in this file ID, you will see that I get back the image that I just uploaded. If I go into the Azure Storage Explorer and open up the files container, you can see my blob here with the random GUID value as the name of the blob. And if I preview this blob, you will see that this is the same image. If I go ahead and delete this image by calling the delete endpoint, and then I try to get it again by calling the get endpoint, I'm going to get back a 500 server error response because this blob no longer exists 
and I'm not handling this case in my service. One more Azure service that is very popular is Azure Functions, and if you want to learn more about Azure Functions, then you should watch this video next. Smash the like button on your way out, and until next time, stay awesome.